You know, after the release of Red Dead Redemption 2 late this year, I really didn't think anything else was going to capture my attention this much. Like, yes, I knew Smash Brothers was on the way, I knew I was going to have fun with it, but I didn't think it's something that I would sink this much time into, and I definitely didn't think it was something that would make me completely stop playing Red Dead Redemption, at least for the time being. Trust me, I'm not done with that game. But as soon as I started playing Smash Brothers Ultimate, I started to get flashbacks of the last Super Smash Brothers, and I realized, oh yeah, I played that game a lot as well. In fact, I played Smash Brothers on my 3DS so much while I was traveling the states that I actually broke my left toggle stick on the system. Snapped clean off one day, and that was actually the last time I played Smash on 3DS. <laughs> But even with that information, my addiction to Smash Brothers Ultimate has been a very pleasant surprise. I feel like it's redundant to try and review Super Smash Brothers, to try and pose the question of, is Super Smash Brothers worth it? It's kind of a stupid question. So instead, in this video, just like in so many of my videos, I'm going to be gushing about Smash Brothers, going over every little aspect that I adore about the game, explaining just why I personally have been so addicted to this title and finally I'd like to enforce the point that yes this is the ultimate version of Smash Brothers and in my opinion it is the best Smash Brothers so far finally something that's knocked Melee off its pedestal at least for me Melee was fantastic but I <laughs> Let's get started. Oh, and obviously, uh, subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And while you're down there, my t-shirts are on sale for a limited time. You might want to check that out. I want to dive straight into the adventure mode because that's what surprised me and impressed me the most. Again, I played a lot of The Last Smash on my 3DS, but that was just me playing match after match after match. Yeah, there was a solo mode in it, but in my opinion, it wasn't that engaging. So while we were getting closer and closer to Ultimate, I wasn't all that excited because I just didn't feel like playing Smash on my own this time around. And while I knew it had an adventure mode, I also knew that it was a spirit mode. And even though they did like 17 directs and one was almost entirely about the spirit mode, something still wasn't registering with me on what the spirit mode actually was or how much fun it was actually going to be or even how much effort they put into it. In fact, throughout the entire game of Smash Brothers Ultimate, from every single one of its modes down to the very obvious amount of characters, I am constantly flawed and surprised with the amount of effort they put into this game. It's something I'm gonna say a few times, but when they put Ultimate into the title of this release, they were not kidding. So the adventure mode. Obviously, as the cutscene tells you, the entire Smash roster of characters gets clicked into Oblivion Marvel style, and only Kirby is left to save the day. And it's at the end of this cutscene that you see Kirby looking out onto the world of light. And as cool as that cutscene is, it's actually after that that this mode starts getting really awesome. Piece by piece you start to realize that the world of light, the actual land they have built, is made up from all of the universes that these characters come from. Without ruining too many of these areas, a couple of my favorites would be the Donkey Kong area where it almost literally becomes Donkey Kong Country, and then the Street Fighter area which sends you on a world tour and when you leave area to area it even puts you in a little plane and if you haven't played this yet you might be thinking to yourself right now oh that's actually kind of cool I guess they've just made the lands and the areas look like the franchises the characters have come from I guess that's kind of cool but no it doesn't end there because all the battles that you have in these specific areas goes even further to reflect the area that you're in and that's where the spirit side of things comes into play and this was the part that I really wasn't understanding even through all of those directs this entire entire adventure mode revolves around you collecting spirits. Just like all of the main cast of characters that were wiped out in that big explosion at the start of the game, it's implied that all of these spirits were also wiped out. So much like the roster of characters, you're also going around and saving the spirits. Throughout the world on the map, you'll see human-like icons, and those are the actual characters that you battle and then you unlock and get in your party, but everything else is a floating spirit orb. And every single one of these orbs, and there is Literally hundreds on hundreds of these embody a different spirit from who knows where. 
The possibilities are literally endless. I have come across the weirdest and wackiest spirits in this game. Like Rayman was one of them. You never know what you're gonna get. But this is where it gets awesome. Whatever spirit that it is, it's that spirit that embodies the battle you're about to have and the battle is catered around whatever spirit it is. What do I mean by that? Well, let's travel back to the Street Fighter world, for example. One of the spirits you find is Blanca, obviously a character from the Street Fighter series who isn't in this game. But they still kind of make you feel like you're fighting the spirit of Blanca. They give you Donkey Kong, they make him the shade of green, and they give him that up the ability that Samus has, which is kind of like a big ball of electric buzz. And suddenly, it's kind of like you're fighting Blanca. Also in the Street Fighter area, you find the spirit of Balrog and that gives you Little Mac but huge. Oh, and of course, in the Street Fighter area, all of the battles are stamina. Not stock, not time, no, stamina. Just like traditional Street Fighter. It's such a nice little touch. And I could go on and on with examples because every single one of these spirits is a battle like this and there are hundreds. Every single spirit battle is a celebration of that spirit, is a celebration of that franchise. And when you couple that with the world of light and the land that they have built, which is also a celebration of all these different areas and franchises come together in one big game, and this entire adventure mode is just a perfect representation of what Smash Brothers actually is. Again, a celebration of all of these huge franchises and worlds merging together in a one. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm still going with my playthrough of the adventure mode. I've put in over 12 hours into this thing. I've discovered so many areas, so many battles. I've had so much fun and it's still going. And I know I said I'm addicted to Smash Brothers. So you would think, well, why haven't you at least finished this yet? Because I can't divide my time enough between all of these modes. I've spent an equal amount of time on the online. I've spent an equal amount of time offline, an equal amount of time I'm exploring everything that Smash Brothers Ultimate has to offer. And another reason why it's taken me so long to play through this adventure mode is it's hard as holy heck sometimes. The AI in this game is brilliant. It's the best AI I've seen in a Smash Brothers game. If you want a challenge, Whoa. Before now, I've always had to seek out real life people to find any kind of challenge in a Smash Brothers game. But oh, some of these fights in adventure mode are just brutal. And I think the final thing that I really adore about the adventure mode is that there's so many ways to unlock characters in this game. In fact, there are so many characters in the game, it seems like they're constantly throwing you new challenges no matter what you do. It's almost like they're saying, we have so many characters, just unlock them, please. We need to get through these in one lifetime. But despite all the other ways to unlock characters, in my opinion, the best way is to do it in adventure mode, even though it's really the slowest way. I'm literally missing every single Fire Emblem character. I have no idea where they are. But it's the thrill and I guess just part of the story, starting as Kirby with no allies around you and slowly progressing your way through this unknown land, unlocking allies piece by piece as you go. And of course, I've unlocked some outside of the adventure mode because I have played online, I have played other modes and they just keep throwing them at me. But wherever possible, I much prefer unlocking them through the adventure mode. And there's so much more I could talk about just in this one mode. Although those are all my favorite parts about it. But if you think that's it for the solo play, if you think the rest is going to be online or playing with friends, you've got another thing coming because there's also classic mode. And this blows my mind even more as if there wasn't enough detail put into this game, but the classic mode has been stepped up another notch with its 1,076 characters, every single character has their own tailored adventure in classic mode. For example, the first character I tried out was Link. So as you can expect, some of these tailored battles had you doing things like trying to defeat Ganondorf with Zelda at your side. But the best part is, these characters each have their own boss battle at the end. And these boss battles aren't necessarily characters that are playable in the game. They are boss battles that were made for the classic mode mode. Like Link has to fight freaking Ganon. Again, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but playing through a Simon and getting to the Dracula fight at the end. 
Oh boy, I love this Smash Brothers. <laughs> so yeah, these are the two main modes that I have the most fun in on my own, but there's still so much more you can do before you even invite a friend around your house or boot up your dial-up. Oh, and speaking of dial-up, obviously I'm not on dial-up, but something that made me really happy was, as it turns out, I don't need that LAN adapter. I was really worried during that Nintendo Direct when they recommended using a LAN adapter. But as it turns out, I've had really next to no issue playing online. Yeah, I've been kicked from a couple battles. Yeah, I've had lag here or there. As to be expected while playing a fighter online. I don't think I've ever played a fighter online and had it been picture perfect flawless. But for over 95% of all the battles I've had online, which at this point have been a lot, I've had zero issues. The only complaints I have are with my own skill or with how ridiculously overpowered King K. Rool is. And I'm sorry if you don't think so, but that character is stupid. Something that really did surprise me was I was super excited to use my GameCube controller in the game, you know, get that old school feeling. Plus, every Smash Brothers game since Melee, and yes, that's how we pronounce it in Australia, at least that's how I pronounced it, since Melee, <laughs> I've used the GameCube controller. But for some reason, and I don't know what it is, I have a lot of issues using the GameCube controller, and I've switched to the Pro, it's actually a lot better. And I don't know if it's just my controller, maybe I got a dodgy one, but pretty often I find myself trying to put in a command, like an up B being the main one that's very frustrating and it just not registering in the game. I'm really hoping it's not just my controller, but even still, I'm having a lot more success with the Pro. So all the modes aside, when it comes to strictly the fighting, at the start of this video, I made a claim that this is the best Smash Brothers since Melee. And again, that's just my opinion. Opinion. But we all know as far as every other release since Melee is concerned, people haven't really considered it as technical a fighter as the GameCube version. And I would agree, while I loved Brawl, I loved the Wii U slash 3DS versions, they never felt as tight and as precise as Melee. But I honestly believe that this one feels and plays so much better. I never took my wins and losses too seriously after Melee, I just played the game and had a good time. I find myself getting very competitive in Ultimate. It feels like something I can master, I can perfect with nothing getting in my way other than my own skill. So whichever way you slice it, from the the content to the characters to the fighting, Smash Brothers Ultimate truly is the ultimate Smash Brothers. It's absolutely become my favorite fighting game of all time, and something that really caught me off guard was leading up to it, I said, it's Smash Brothers, you know, Smash Brothers is great, but it's never something that's going to be game of the year contender. But with the amount of content, the amount of love, the amount of effort, the amount this game has to offer, the amount of work that was put into it, and the fact that it's not only, in my opinion, the best Smash game, but probably the best fighting game of all time. I would not be surprised to see this bad boy in the top five games for next year. If, for whatever reason, you are on the fence about picking up Smash Brothers, I hope this video helped you out. I've even left a link down below for you to go out and grab this game, so make sure to check it out. And while you're down there, I'm also giving away the game, so make sure to enter the competition. Hef lip all over that subscribe button because that was really loud and I'd appreciate it. Click or tap on this video right here because it was another smashing good time and I'm so glad that Smash Brothers cured my sickness. I'm gonna go play some more.